What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to talk about what's going on with the overall market, what's going on with SPY, Tesla, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm also gonna break down what's happening with the overall market moving forward as we had important earnings that just came out. Not to mention more important data coming out for tomorrow that's gonna to affect the markets. But before I break the devil's information, before I talk about what the trust is suggesting, what could end up playing out, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner. Take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very soon in just five days. Anyways, for SPY, as you guys can see, we got a very, very nice close. I saw SPY dip because of the fact that the GDP numbers came out a little bit lower than expectations. So that's actually showing signs of contraction in the economy. The interest rates are still affecting us. And we are technically getting a little bit closer to a recession, especially as the jobs numbers are not really good. Uh, but, uh, you know, on paper, at least based off the data that they're showing us, not saying it's true or false or anything like that, we're not officially in one, at least based off that for now solely. Uh, but despite that, uh, the market ended up bouncing intraday. The market ended up getting a nice rebound as we're seeing some positivity uh, approaching our uh, big tech earnings, not to mention the PCE data for tomorrow. So I'm going to break down more details about the data and such before I break down these charts. Starting with tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be Friday, April 26, 2024. Tomorrow, an hour before the market opens, we have the PCE data coming out. I give you guys a warning about this. It was very important. PCE is just another important inflationary measure, which the Fed tends to prioritize. Uh, PC is heavily dictated by CPI, and that's why I think it's important to go over this first. So we have a very similar trend right here. So on CPI, we saw a slight increase for the month of March when it comes to inflation for all items. But for core CPI, this was actually very close to before. So I think that the trend on PC will most likely follow this, at least based off what expectations are showing us. So two things I'm going to just talk about. Core PCE. We want this to be between 2.6 and 2.7%. There's a very good chance it's going to be very close to that, in my personal opinion, based on what we saw from CPI. However, what does make me a little bit apprehensive is uh, PCE for all items. We're expecting this to be around 2.6%, a slight increase from 2.5% from before. Uh, but it's not necessarily the end of the world because of the fact that uh, sometimes the data could be a little bit nuanced. Just because CPI was a little bit harder than expected doesn't mean PC has to be like that. It could just still be uh, aligned with expectations. So as long as it's like 2.6% or below that for all items, I think that there's still a chance the market could continue this push. Then later on for tomorrow, we have more data, which is not that significant. We have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Reports, the five-year inflationary expectations and such. We'll be watching for this at 10 a.m., 30 minutes after market open. For now, let's just focus on PC and see what this causes. Now, moving forward for the fear and greed index, the market is still fearful. We're getting closer, a little bit closer to neutral than before. Uh, but moving forward, we'll see if this continues. Market momentum is still kind of neutral, it's starting to shift a bit as we're starting to see some buyers stepping in. And then the puts and call option ratio went up to about one. And then what's happening is as the market's pushing, a lot of these institutions are closing puts and they're hedging by buying shares. When they hedge by buying shares, this is helping to push the market higher. So that's very, very key for the way the market's moving. On top of this, market volatility is still neutral as the VIX has been approaching its 50 daily moving average. It tried to bounce and we did see the market drop a bit when it bounced, but then came back down later on. So the VIX is starting to still show some weakness, which is once again, because of the market showing some strength. Now, moving forward, let's talk about earnings. Then I'm going to talk about the options chain for SPY before I end up uh, talking about the charts. So for earnings, I went over Royal Caribbean for today in my morning video. They did relatively well. But now, just a couple of hours ago, we just had Microsoft, Alphabet, Intel, and Snap announce their earnings. I'm going to go over the first four uh, very, very quickly. Microsoft is doing relatively well. The share price is up right now. They surpassed a lot of analysts' forecast, which is not bad whatsoever. We had $61.9 billion in revenue up 17% year over year. Net income is up 20%. Uh, it reached about $21.9 billion, not bad whatsoever, beating estimations. EPS was also above expectations at $2.94, a 20% increase overall. Their overall projections for the future are not bad as they're looking pretty good for the next upcoming quarter. And we're starting to see some good financial estimates. So with cloud revenue going up and these nice pieces of growth and their forecast looking pretty good, right? Things are looking pretty good right now. They're surpassing the forecasts, looking pretty good. The share price is up as of right now. For Alphabet, we're seeing something very, very similar. The share price is up 14%. This is having a bigger effect on tech. Uh, this is an even bigger push. 
And the reason why this is important is because we're seeing more buyers becoming excited as a result of this. They have announced something very massive, and that's the fact that they have a new dividend coming out. Their first dividend has been announced, and I think that that is going to be key for investors and the share price. So they've beat on earnings. Uh, Microsoft is actually up 4.5%, by the way. Alphabet is currently up about 11%, still up pretty nicely. So the main two big ones are up quite nicely. Uh, EPS was a dollar and 89 cents above expectations. Revenue was at 80 billion above expectations. They beat on YouTube advertising revenue, Google Cloud revenue. The traffic acquisition costs are once again very close to expectations, not too bad. And the revenue increased 15%, so that's pretty good. They also have this new dividend that they're going to be announcing that's very bullish. And finally, they beat many more projections with decent guidance. So Good guidance, first ever dividend, beating on earnings, amazing for Alphabet. I'm going to be very quick with these last two. Intel it had kind of weak forecasts, unfortunately. That's why the share price is, is, is down, excuse me, 8%. We had an EPS of $0.18. Cents. Uh, that is adjusted a little bit above expectations, but revenue was actually just short at $12.78 billion. Uh, that's what was expected. We actually got 12.72 billion, so a little bit short on that. And then this is the issue. The second quarter is showing uh, EPS is a little bit lower than what Wall Street wants, especially their midpoint of revenue. So earnings are not looking as strong for the second quarter. That's why the share price is down for Intel. And last but not least for Snap, this is the last one we're going to talk about. The share prices, the share price is up 27% as they beat on earnings and they had good reports. They actually saw uh, a profit for earnings per share versus the loss that was expected that's very bullish revenue is a beat their global daily active users is above expectations and their average revenue per users is better than expected guidance is looking pretty good as well and revenue came in stronger than expected with nice growth overall so that's pretty good they're actually in line with expectations at least for wall street for the second quarter you guys can see it right here so that's why the share price is up for this as well anyways hopefully that summary was pretty nice and concise at least for the earnings now let's talk about one more thing before i break down the charts so for spy i noticed something very interesting for tomorrow tomorrow is april 26th we have about three hundred and eighty-four thousand calls expiring and we have over uh, or very close to 1.4 million puts expiring with 504 being max pain and a 2.85 put to call ratio. Overall, I would say that with all the puts expiring, uh, market makers could try something funny and they could try to squeeze shorts uh, or something else could happen. But I just wanted to call this out that this does help favor the notion that the market may have more upside coming. All right, so not a guarantee. It depends on the data, of course. The data is going to be a big key in whether or not this happens. So please remember that. I'm not saying the market will explode. I'm saying that there's a good chance the market has upside coming, but this will depend on data as well. So if the data is bad, if we get a hot PCE report above the expectations I showed you and we end up turning, Look at support at 505. If we lose that, uh, 505.5, we're going to be looking for a drop down to 502 again. And then if we turn bullish, if we keep pushing, you want to see it break past 509. If we break this resistance, previous support becoming resistance, 512 and 515 are strong possibilities for SPY. In my opinion, the chart looks like it's bullish. We're forming a cup and handle. The four hour is turning back to bullish. The odds do favor this pushing up to this imbalance at about 512, in my opinion. But I'm not going to promise it. No promises are going to be made. It also depends on the data. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I personally do favor upside a little bit more. For Tesla, this is a big one. Tesla is very bullish right now. It's continuing to break out. We got some bu bu bullish news that came out involving their AI development and also their NVIDIA chips that they're going to be acquiring to help train AI. This is very, very big news. And I see this easily, easily pushing up to at least 175 a share. At least that's the most likely possibility. And if it breaks that, watch 178, then 180. Uh, the thing about Tesla is that if we get a bad PC and we dip a little bit, I'll be watching 168 as key support. But the odds do favor at least 175 plus, if not 180. 78 uh 1 168 then 170 above that that is what this chart strongly favors it's looking very strong and it's outperforming the market there's a good chance tesla could push more for spy not spy i went over spy already uh nvidia is what i meant to say nvidia it's starting to bounce as well after bullish news came out from analysts saying that there's going to be a big bounce in a lot of the uh, uh semiconductor companies for the month of may so that's a good forecast from analysts there's a lot of optimism about earnings and there was a lot of big news about nvidia once again supplying tesla more so this was good for nvidia the share price ended up making a big turn because of this bullish news that came out yes sometimes technicals could show that the chart looks bearish but if bullish news comes out it can make a big u-turn sometimes that happens and that's what happened to nvidia for today alongside the market bouncing so nvidia could push up to 862 if that breaks we could easily go all the way up towards 880 all over again 
The chart is looking bullish. It does favor the upside, but just to be safe, we'll have to wait and see. If we turn bearish tomorrow, we'll look at 830 as a key level. If we lose this, I could see 820, but I favor more upside based off the chart and based off what we're seeing. Four, let's double check this. The QQQ, we have a cup and handle like structure. If we're bullish tomorrow, especially considering the fact that big tech is pushing thanks to Alphabet and Microsoft, uh, there's a very good chance it's going to test this 200 EMA on the four hour time frame at 432. And if we break that, I'll be looking for 435 and then higher levels. If we reject off 43, we're going to be looking for a move back down towards 425. But I favor more upside as a strong possibility. Anyways, I just want to say that the QQQ is looking pretty good in my opinion. I think that it's very, very probable it's going to push higher. And I do favor that a lot more. However, it also depends on the data, so be prepared for anything just to be safe, but just know that this chart does have a lot of bullish confluences. For Apple, we look bullish as well. Now, if we were to turn bearish unexpectedly because of bad news or because of PCE data not being good, look at support at 170. If we lose that, our, we're going to be coming all the way down to 168.81. That's where our 50 EMA is. Then there's 168 flat and then 167.5 as support. If it breaks higher, you're going to be looking for this imbalance to fill at 172.5. What do I think is going to happen? I think this chart looks more bullish now. It's trying to push up higher after bullish news came out. And also because of big tech right now, it's pushing in the after hours. So I could see it try to get up to 171 again and then maybe break out to 172.5 later. The chart looks a bit more bullish in my personal opinion. All right, guys. So I went over the main five I typically go over. Uh, I tried to be kind of brief with this. I am a little bit late today. I had some things I had to deal with, but it's okay. And now I just want to focus on the other charts. I'm going to be even quicker with these, so please bear with me. For Palantir, okay? Palantir has an inverse head and shoulders like structure. I'm going to be looking for a test of 22.36. If we could break that, I could see 23 coming. The chart is looking a bit more bullish to me. For Super Micro, this is also looking a little bit more bullish. It got a nice break thanks to nvidia and also the overall market and more bullish news about the semiconductor industry for may so i could see 843.91 is the next target if it continues to bounce i also mentioned some upside was a possibility in my video from yesterday and that's what's happening today I'm going to be looking for 800 to hold 820 then 843.91 i do favor upside a bit more for rivian I think that we're trying to base right here at this 8.5 area. If we push higher, look for 8.79. If that breaks, $9 is coming. I favor upside a bit more, and I think that's very probable. For SoFi, SoFi is also trying to push higher, and I do favor that a bit more. Uh, if we break past 7.7, .7, we're going to be looking for a move all the way up towards 7.9. SoFi is showing some nice potential for a double bottom like structure, and I think we could be pushing a little bit higher looking at the current setup. Now, this also depends on PCE data. If we lose 7.59, we're going to turn back down. We're going to be looking for a move back up to 7.4. But I think that the chart is favoring bulls a bit more. I called downside in my video from yesterday about the NVIDIA, uh, uh, IWM. Excuse me. Uh, we have a double top leg structure. It's not looking that good. To be bullish, you want to see it get back above 197.75. If we break that, we could easily push closer to 200. If we fail to hold that, and we continue lower, you're going to be looking for a test of 195. Losing that would sink this all the way down to the 193s. Now, the chart is showing some weakness on the four hour. Unfortunately, we have to get back above at least 196.5 and 197.75 to turn bullish. Otherwise, this is looking a little bit weak. I'm hoping it tries to bounce tomorrow, but the chart is looking a little bit weak from a technical standpoint right now. For AMD, we're looking a bit more bullish. I called a bounce yesterday, and that's what happened. Watch 158. If we break through this, We'll be looking for a move all the way up towards uh, 163. That's going to be coming next, 163.5. It has potential, but we have to wait for confirmation. For ARM, we're holding above our 20 EMA. If we hold above 99.63, we'll be looking for a test of 108 if we continue to bounce from here. So it has potential. We called 100 yesterday. We're going to be looking for 107.6 tomorrow. It has potential to push. For Coinbase, uh, I was worried that if we lost 215, we could sink to fill this gap. We actually came short of doing that today. Instead, it's trying to rebound now. So we have a very, very interesting range. Uh, I'm going to be looking at 227. If we manage to break through that, look for 232, then 240. If we lose 221, we're going to be sinking back down. But overall, I see potential for this to go a little bit higher. So watch for that very carefully. For Amazon, Amazon's trying to push a little bit higher. We have 179 as resistance. If we break through this, we're going to be looking for a push all the way up towards... 
one basically all the way up towards this 184 area if we do keep going amazon is showing life in the after hours is showing like a lot of potential but we have to hold above 180 losing 180 would open the doors for 179 then eventually 177 but i favor the upside a bit more towards 184 that to me looks a bit more bullish and i really hope that that could work out uh for what else is there we have meta meta came down quite a bit a big drop after earnings but now it's trying to slowly climb its way back up. We have 450 as our next level to be watching for. Then our next level uh, is basically in that 450 range. We have previous support becoming resistance. And then if that breaks, our next level is going to be all the way up towards 465. So from the way I see things, I think there's a very good chance that Meta will continue to push higher. I favor that a bit more. Uh, but we have to wait and see. It was kind of oversold in the way it dropped Despite the fact that earnings weren't really that bad, it was just one little sector, just our uh, projections, which weren't as strong. Otherwise, they had pretty good earnings, and yet the share price is a little bit oversold, in my opinion. Uh, looking at Microsoft, it's trying to bounce in the after hours. We're going to be looking for a test of about 418. Breaking that opens the doors for about 430. Could go a little bit higher and slowly push into the 420, so I see potential for this. Alphabet is on a big tear right now, continuing to push higher. We're going to be looking at resistance at 180 uh, and also 177.5. I could see this trying to go higher. It's looking pretty good right now. The VIX is starting to sink right now. We're going to be testing a key support right here at 15.29. If the VIX loses the support, it's going to be sinking all the way down towards the 14s. If that's the case, this would be because of the market bouncing. We're at support on the VIX. If it bounces off this and it starts pushing back up to 16, uh, 16 points, uh, 62 that would be because of the market potentially sinking so as of right now i see potential in the vix i think that this thing could definitely uh push the, uh, the market could definitely push if this does drop so i'm seeing a little weakness now the 10-year treasury yield is still on a high note the reason why i went up is because of the fact that the gdp numbers were kind of uh, lackluster but we have two gaps to fill below if you retrace, watch 4.7. If you reject off resistance, we're going to come down to 4.59. As of right now, it's holding up nicely despite the way the market's moving. And the chart does look a bit more bullish for now. But as of right now, it's not really affecting the market as much. So things are still fine despite that, at least for bulls. And then the dollar index, this is having a bigger effect on the markets. I would say that the dollar is still kind of sinking a bit. If we continue to fall, we're going to be looking at the support right here at. 105.5 if we lose that this imbalance is going to get filled towards 105.25 it's looking a bit more bearish which suggests that there's more upside potential for the markets so i'm going to be watching that very very carefully with that being said that's it for the video guys sorry i'm kind of late today i was having uh, a lot of issues to deal with but everything's been taken care of everything is okay and we're going to be looking to see how the market moves for tomorrow for tomorrow i'll be back in the morning to break down what happens with all this data and we'll hope for the best and be optimistic nonetheless but with that being said thank you for listening please have an absolutely incredible rest of the day enjoy your evening and i'll see you guys very soon on the next one thank you for listening and peace out